Yeah, it's important to see really what's our priority in life. And I know we are in Goa and we shouldn't speak about priorities and responsibilities, but here we do for a moment. I hope it's fine with everyone. When the priority of our life is to um, rearrange our thoughts and emotions and sensations and experiences to a perfect picture that will always mean we are so happy. Uh, we are so calm, we are so this and that, all the best descriptions that we want, you know, sexy, smart, whatever, spiritual, whatever your favorite uh, title of, of description is or labels, we see that we are constantly stuck in a hamster wheel, in a soap opera of our own making, and it doesn't get better as times go, time goes by. It actually, we add on more expectations from ourselves and things we need to do in order to reach there. Now we might have the most beautiful ideals anyone can have in human life according to our own uh, um, ideas, so to speak. And yet there will be such a gap between everyday life reality to these ideals because we are basing our, thought, our life and our actions based on what we think and feel and trying to avoid the negative and gain more positive. Many of us assume that having positive thoughts is a good sign that we are getting somewhere and that having negative thoughts is a sign that we are off track. Do you know this assumption? Sin and uh, karma, should I add a few more? Uh, they just make us be basically feel flawed just sometimes just because we were born into this world and other times due to all of these actions that we can't even remember from one million years ago. So coming to life like that and then living everyday life is quite a struggle and I for sure know it from my own experience. My mission and my goal, my priority was to be happy and it's, uh, I think it's a genuine request and heart wish. I want to be happy and I want to do good but I was constantly focused on the rearrange, range, rearrangement and micromanagement of the display and I always felt disappointed. Doesn't mean I didn't have peaks of highs and excitement and good news and good experiences but as everything else it's impermanent and then I was lost again to the world of oh, why, why did it go? It was so good a moment ago. What, what did I do wrong? The falling in love or the I feel so confident today. All the all my thoughts and emotions are, are just so confident. And then I come to this stage and I feel like I'm going to collapse and die from tension and anxiety. Everyone looks worried. I, I, it's, it's just a, an example. <laughs> it's not how I feel right now, actually. I think so. Wait. Let, let, let me think about it. Right. Okay. <laughs> and then attaching reasons why. It's because my father didn't encourage my confidence side when I was a child, aha! <laughs> That's why I feel anxiety before speaking in front of people. That's just nonsense. And to be introduced to the basic state, awareness, open intelligence, what holds and subsumes all of these appearances, that's the only way to sanity. Because regardless of our most beautiful descriptions, we will never reach satisfaction if we don't know what's, what's in the basis and what, what actually runs the show and inseparable from all of us. And this is open intelligence or awareness. Many of us think that this state of awareness is some kind of... Um, based on all the things that we learn, so you know, it's not like we are wrong or something, but that it's some kind of state of an observer who's watching life like a movie and, and detached from everything and we think that's an aim and a goal or we think it's such a special state that happens only to really really special people only once in every one million years and then we're like okay <laughs> maybe it won't be me now so you see we put all of these uh, limitations on our basic nature that of course we can't enjoy it and we think that to reach there to reach the accomplishment of it it means that we need to effort for the rest of our life and beyond now that's not a fun game to play where everything <laughs> is present all at once when you recognize what's looking through your eyes 
this is open intelligence and to be introduced to it very directly just stop thinking for a moment what remains openness alertness cognizance the power to know this is open intelligence it's what's looking through your eyes what sensing whatever you're sensing right now this is open intelligence now most of us ignore that for all of our life we were so busy in the game of rearranging our data streams thoughts emotions sensations appearances that we got lost in that and we didn't recognize the stability that is in the basis so now when we stop thinking of course thoughts and emotions will come in again Oh, I like the wind, I don't like the wind, oh, it's interesting, it's really not interesting, I know it already, that was my, uh, my approach in my first meeting, I know it already, what are they talking about? And, um, but regardless, see that whether you have thoughts or no thoughts, open intelligence remains, and here we see our most important choice that we have in every moment. We can either emphasize the soap opera, uh, the data streams, giving them an independent nature that they don't have, so it's completely ridiculous, or we can rely and rest naturally for one short moment. Rest naturally as open intelligence for one short moment. Not observe your data streams as a cat watching a mouse or someone watching a really interesting or not interesting movie, but prioritize open intelligence recognition through complete relaxation. And what we come to see there, that all of these data streams are simply the dynamic potency, beneficial potency of open intelligence and nothing else. They are not our enemies that came to attack us and rob us from our well-being and stability. They are simply the display of pure openness, dynamic energy that we can use and utilize for the benefit of all. And that keeps things really simple. You see, it's a simple choice of how we use our mind in every moment. And I apologize if it's not dramatic as one thought, maybe, you know, where you're waiting for some bombastic moment that you can show off for the rest of your life. That's, that's really like ch children playing in a sandbox. What we are talking about is everyday life itself and how to accomplish the greatest of all greatest through complete relaxation not as a passive state but being fully active in life and that's where true love comes about all the ideas that we have about love the love that comes and goes that is dependent on how she's looking at me how is he looking at me what are they doing right now is it romantic or not how cool am i how sexy am i and uh, all the memories and interpretations these are just data streams but to allow ourselves to be as we are moment to moment that's the greatest love affair where we get to love everything about ourselves, not in a contrived way where we need to hug each other and say, ooh, I love myself, uh, you know, in like, ooh, I accept everything about myself. You know some of these things, I'm sure. I participated in some of these workshops, and of course it was nice at the moment, but it didn't really lead, lead to ever-increasing love of everything about myself. Uh, the love of allowing my data streams, including very negative ones, such as self-hatred, to be as it is. And that's where the power comes. The inseparability of perfect love, open intelligence, from whatever negative state we have, where we see this crucial juncture, like the, the sky is inseparable from the color blue, then there is complete relaxation and complete release, total release of all of the tension that we've been carrying throughout our life. It's just like the heavy burden of being a human being trying to micromanage our experience is just dropped to the ground, one short moment at a time. Now, I really love my cat, for example. It's a special relationship. Her name is Grace Corner Chesna, and she's wonderful, really. She's just majestic. And, um, and and that's also included in open intelligence. But what I started to see through the 12 empowerments is that, uh, which is the foundational training of open intelligence, that perfect love is avail available all of the time. 
all of the time. It allows to love in such an outrageous but yet grounded way. Not contrived, you know, let's love, 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 but really loving ourselves fully exactly as we are, loving our depression, allowing it to be as it is, self-releasing like a line drawn in space, seeing that there's nothing to avoid in complete openness, the complete openness of mind. It's always already the case. We just exhausted ourselves looking for love in all the wrong places. So what started to open up for me is really loving everyone. And then gaining confidence in that one short moment at a time, I could see that this love is, is, is pervading all relationships without any effort. So yes, there can be the special relationships, the wife, the husband, the family, but something is so open and without any expectations and just very grounded because this is our true nature. And the way to introduce ourselves to it is really relying on short moments many times. The 12 empowerments make it obvious. We gain confidence in that. We see all the limitations we placed on perfect love and we are free from them. Not needing to change them, but really seeing that they are just passing descriptions. Passing descriptions. And that's the way to find true stability with things like hope and fear, anger and hatred, Envy and jealousy, pride and arrogance, all of these taboos of human life that good people shouldn't feel, suddenly I came to see and many people come to see, wow, I'm full of it. <laughs> uh, ooh, okay, because always I told to myself, ah, I'm not arrogant, I'm not like these people. <laughs> you know? Do you know that one? You're like, really, I'm not arrogant. I'm like, <laughs> and doing the 12 empowerments and answering those questions and sharing with the groups, I was like, oh, oh, okay. Ooh. <laughs> jealous? Nah. <laughs> Not recognizing how jealousy is all pervasive and I've tried to avoid it and replace it and indulge it in order to not feel, feel it fully and then having the opportunity to allow it to be as it is and that's powerful. That's really powerful stuff because we are not talking about avoiding human life and human relationships and human experiences. We are talking about allowing everything to be as it is in the most connected, most energized and most potent way, not for our own sake as broken, flawed individuals, but as empowered people who can actually be of benefit to all. Because think about it, once the game is over, and you stop fooling around with trying to better your descriptions about yourself, the world, your cat or your husband or your wife, then there's so much energy. Just yesterday, one participant who started the 12 empowerments a week ago shared, well, what do I do with all of this energy now? He <laughs> shared, there's so much freedom now. What do I do with all of that when I don't need to think about myself and what do I th what's the thought of the day? What's the problem that I need to tackle? And you see, that's true benefit that is the birthright of every human being. No matter how good or bad you think you are, that's the birthright of every human being. And that's what we are claiming and making obvious one short moment at a time and with all the support that is needed.